My Independent Study Guide Booklet, Grade 6, Chapter 1, Ratios and Rates. Number 1. Look at the factors of 18 and 30. What is the greatest common factor? When we look at 18 and 30, we can see that they both have a factor of 1 in common, a factor of 2 in common, a factor of 3 in common, factors of 6 in common, and that is all. The greatest of the factors they have in common is 6. So that is answer choice C. Find the greatest common factor of 24 and 54. So we're going to list, I like to say that when you want to find the greatest common factor, you work backwards. First, you find the factors of each number. That's what F stands for. So we have the number 24 and the number 54. The factors of 24 are 1 and 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. For 54, we have 1 times 54, 2 times 27, 3 times 18, 6 times 9. So we have listed all of the factors of both numbers, so we've earned ourselves an F. Now we have to see, circle the ones that they have in common. They each have a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 6. So now we've earned ourselves a C. Now we have to see, of the ones we circled, which is the greatest? Well, the greatest is 6. So our greatest common factor is 6. So to find the greatest common factor, you have to work backwards. You have to find the factors, circle the ones that are in common, C, circle the ones in common, and G, which of the ones you circled is the greatest. All right, we're going to do the same thing, but this time we have three numbers. I like to list the numbers in order from least to greatest. So we have 12, 16, and 36. For 12, we have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. For 16, we have 1 times 16, 2 times 8, and 4 times 4. For 36, we have 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9. So we've just listed all the factors so we can get of ourselves an F. Now we have to C, circle the ones they have in common. They all have a 1. They all have a 2. They all have a 4. Now, if two of them have a number, that doesn't count. They all have to have a number. So now we have C, circle the ones they have in common. Now, to earn the G, we have to figure out which one is the greatest of the ones we circled. And in this case, it is the 4. So 4 is the greatest common factor for 16, 12, and 36. 
Next, we're going to find the greatest common factor for 38 and 49. So we have 38 and 49. All right, remember, we are working backwards, so we have to find the factors first. We have 1 times 38, and we have 2 times 19. For 49, we have 1 times 49, and 7 times 7. So we've earned ourselves the F. Now we have to C, circle the ones that are in common. They each have a 1, but that's the only value that they share. So when it comes to picking the greatest, that would have to be 1. So 1 is the greatest common factor for 38 and 49. Next, we need to find the least common multiple for 4 and 12 by using prime factors. This means we need to make factor trees. So let's make a factor tree for 4 and 12. 4 can be broken into prime numbers uh, 2 times 2. 12 would be 2 times 6. And 6 can be broken down into 2 times 3. So these are the prime numbers. So the prime numbers for 4 are 2 times 2. The prime numbers for 12 are 2 times 2 times 3. So now we circle this. The, these, this group of 2 is a match. So I write a 2. This group of 2 is a match, so I write a 2. But there is no group here that is a match. Oh, I'm sorry. Even though this isn't a match, I have to include this as well. So that's 3. So 2 times 2 is 4. And 4 times 3 equals 12. So the least common multiple for 4 and 12 would be 12. So when you are using prime factors, uh, you, you circle the ones that match, but you only count them once. And if they don't match, you count it. How many minutes would you have to exercise each day to have a resting heart rate of 60 beats per minute? So let's take a minute to look at this chart. Exercise and your heart. The left or y-axis represents resting heart rate beats per minute. The, so this, remember, is the y-axis, and this is the x-axis. Um, remember, the x-axis is almost always time. If they're, if they're using time, time usually is at the bottom, okay? I realize that this is beats per minute, but they're charting that over time. So here we have daily exercise. Now, they want to talk about beats per minute, and it's 60 beats per minute. So that would be right here. Now, this is a tricky question because it looks like our data is kind of plateauing here. And good news for us is that we have some multiple choice here. Now, in life, you get some multiple choice questions that I particularly don't feel like are great questions. And the reason we're going to keep this question in the study guide here is because it's a good example of what to do when a question may not be written really well. Try to look at your answers. Okay, so let's find out. Is it 20 minutes? Well, here's 20 minutes. Well, obviously, the answer cannot be 20 minutes because 20 is actually represented here and it's not 60. So it can't be 20. Um, 30 minutes would be here, and, you know, that could be a possibility. 60 minutes is way, it's not even included in our chart, okay? So the reality is it's probably not an answer. And then 10 minutes is here, and that's already represented as one of our pieces of data. So if you have difficulty guessing where this estimate would be, Go through and plug in the answers that are provided for you. Eliminate the ones that are clearly not correct 
And in this case, we're going to go with 30 minutes, which is B, and that would be the correct answer. All right, question number two. Express the ratio in simplest form that compares the number of yellow marbles to the total number of marbles. All right, so we're comparing yellow to total. So yellow is going to be our numerator, and total is going to be your denominator. Well, I see that I have two yellows, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten marbles in all. Now, this answer is represented in our answer choices. However, remember that it's asking for it in simplest form. So you want to divide by two, divide by two, and you get one fifth. While two tenths is correct, one fifth is your better answer. Question number three, express the ratio that compares the number of balloons that are not blue, not blue, to the total number of balloons. So we're going to set up our ratio as a fraction, not blue compared to total. All right, so let's start off with a total this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight balloons in all, and this balloon is blue and this balloon is blue. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six balloons that are not blue. And again, we're going to reduce this fraction by dividing by two and dividing by two, and we get three fourths. So that is answer choice C. Question number four. Several students were asked to name the kinds of animals they saw in the past week at the park. Determine the ratio that compares the number of cats seen to the total number of animals seen. So we're going to compare cats to total animals. In our chart, there are two cats. And if we add up the number of animals, we're going to get 16. Now we want to reduce this fraction by dividing the numerator and denominator by 2, and we get 1 eighth, which is answer choice A. Question 5. A poll was taken to total the candy collected by a few students who went trick-or-treating on Halloween. Determine the ratio that compares the number of candy bars to the total pieces of candy. So we're gonna compare the number of candy bars to the total pieces of candy. So we're gonna have candy bars compared to total. All right, we have five candy bars in our chart. And if we count up all of the pieces of candy, all that includes the candy bars, we're gonna get the number 40. So there's 40 pieces of candy in all. Now, we again need to reduce by dividing by five on the top and five on the bottom, and that gives us 1 eighth, which is answer choice H. Express four tickets for $35 as a unit rate. So we're going to express the tickets compared to the money as a unit rate. So we have money compared to tickets. All 
So we have $35 for four tickets. A unit rate means how much would you have for one ticket? Well, to get from four to one, we divide by four. This means we have to divide 35 by four. So we're gonna do 35 divided by four. Four cannot divide three. It can divide 35 eight times, which is 32. Subtract, you get three. Add a decimal point, bring down the zero. Four can go into 37 times, which is 28. 28 subtract, or sorry, 30 subtract 28 is uh, two. Bring down the zero. Four goes into 25 times, which is 20. So you can subtract 20 and that equals zero. So our answer is $8.75 for one ticket. Okay, so one ticket is $8.75. And that is answer choice B. Express the ratio of 300 miles to 25 gallons of gasoline as a unit rate. So we're gonna compare miles to gallons. We are given the rate 300 miles to 25 gallons. So I'm gonna write 300 on the top and 25 on the bottom. Now they want this as a unit rate. So we wanna know how much, how far you can go on just one gallon. Now I know that I'm changing gallons to one and not miles to one because all of my answer choices are per gallon, per gallon, per gallon, per gallon. So I need to make gallons a one. Now to complete this equal ratio, I would divide 25 by 25 to get one. And that means I'm gonna divide 300 by 25. So we can go over here and do 300 divided by 25. Uh, 25 goes into 30 once. 30 take away 25 is five, bring down the zero. 25 goes into 50 two times, which is 50, with nothing left over. So our answer is 12. So our answer choice is A, 12 miles per gallon. Bonnie purchased a 30 ounce package of chocolate chunk cookies for $2.40. What is the cost per ounce? So we're comparing money to ounces. We know that you can buy 30 ounces for $2.40. We are being asked how much it would cost per one ounce. So we're gonna put a one as our denominator. To solve this equivalent ratio, we would have to divide by 30 on the bottom and divide by 30 on the top. So you can have $2.40 divided by 30. 30 is not able to divide two, add your decimal point. It is not able to divide 24, it can divide 240 eight times. Eight multiplied by 30 is 240. When you subtract, you have nothing left over. Now 0 0.08 is eight tenths, or sorry, eight hundredths of a dollar. So it's eight hundredths of a dollar, which is actually just eight pennies or eight cents. 
so it's actually eight cents per ounce. So eight hundredths is eight pennies. Number four, the number 712 school bus traveled 150 miles on 10 gallons of gas. How many miles per gallon does the bus get? We're, we are comparing miles to gallons. We know that our bus can go 150 miles on 10 gallons of gas. We're being asked to find uh, how many miles it can go per one gallon. So we're gonna put one as our denominator. To complete this equivalent uh, ratio, we're going to have to divide by 10 on the bottom and divide by 10 on the top. You can solve this mentally if you remember in fifth grade, if you wanted to divide a number by 10, you simply move the decimal point to the left one space. So in the number 150, the decimal point would be at the end. And if I'm dividing by 10, all I have to do is move the decimal point to the left one time. So 150 divided by 10 equals 15. Now, if you don't trust the mental math, of course, you could always actually do long division. 10 cannot divide one. 10 is able to divide 15 once. You get five left over, bring down the zero. 10 is able to go into 50 five times, which is 50, and you have zero left over. So it's 15 miles per one gallon, which is answer choice A. Question number five. At the homecoming basketball game, Julia made six free throws in the course of 42 minutes of play. Write this as a unit rate. Now, one thing here is that we're comparing free throws to minutes of play. So we need to kind of look at what thing they want us to make the unit rate. So we want to look at there are answer choices. Two free throws for every 15 minutes played, one free throw for every six minutes played, three free throws for every 20 minutes played, one free throw for every seven minutes played. Now, I have to tell you that right away, a unit rate means per one unit. So already, answer choice A is out, and answer choice C is out, because it's comparing 2 to 15 and 3 to 20. Okay, unit rate is per one unit. So here's one free throw for every six minutes, one free throw for every seven minutes. So we're comparing free throws to minutes. And we have six to 42. Now based on our choices, we're gonna change the free throws to one. So how do I get from six to one? I divide by six. 42 divided by 6 equals 7. So she's making one throw every 7 minutes played, which is answer choice D. Let me get my marker back here, okay. Um, I can see that I have one gallon of water per five tea bags. So to go from one to five, I'm multiplying by five. So to go from the top row to the bottom row, I'm multiplying by five. Now, if I had two here, that means I'd have 10 here. If I have three here, that means I'm gonna have 15 down here. In the last row, I have four, so that means I'm gonna have 20. So if I have four gallons of water, I'm going to have 20 tea bags. That is answer choice B. Question two, to make coffee, 
One small scoop of coffee grounds is added to two cups of water. Use the ratio table to find how many cups of water to use for five scoops of coffee. So I look at my ratio table here. I have scoops of coffee compared to cups of water. Really, this is just a fraction. If you remember, I was writing the fractions above. They just put a box around it and made it a chart. Um, and again, um, I can ask myself, how do I get from one to two? I multiply by two. So to get from five down here, I multiply by two, and that would be 10. So five scoops of coffee get, needs 10 cups of water. Another way to complete this would be, how do I get from one to five? I multiply by five. And how do I get from here to here? I multiply by five, which equals 10. Question number three. At an award ceremony, 90 people are seated at 15 tables. There are the same number of people seated at each table. Use the ratio table to determine the number of people seated at each table. All right, now these are pretty big numbers. And when I see 90 and 15, I wanna reduce that because obviously I need to get to one, but these are fairly large numbers to work with. And when I see the nine and I see the 15, the number that jumps into my head is three. Both of these numbers are divisible by three. So I'm gonna divide 90 by three, and I'm hoping in sixth grade you can do this mentally. 90 divided by three is 30. Then I'm gonna divide 15 by three, and that gives me five. Now I'm working with my five times tables, which are pretty easy. Five divided by five equals one, and 30 divided by five equals six. So this means that if I have one table, six people can sit there. And that is answer choice C. For a school field day, 72 students are divided into 12 teams. If each team has the same number of students, use the ratio table to determine the number of students on two teams. All right, so here we have 72 and 12. Now, when I look here, I immediately think of the number six. Now, you may think of just the, by dividing by two. Um, now, they have a, a spot here. So, I mean, you could just divide by six and get here, like divide by six and get two and divide by six and um, get your answer, but, and get 12, okay? But another way, if you want, if you had to fill out the middle row, you could actually do 72 divided by four and you would get 18. And then 12 divided by four and you get three. Then you could do th three divided by three equals one, and 18 divided by three equals six. And then you could do one times two equals two, and six times two equals 12. So there are many different ways to fill out a chart, but hopefully you got the answer 12. A store sells 22 bottles of water for $4. Use a ratio table to find the cost of 33 bottles. Now, as you look here, you see 22 and four, and 22 cannot be divided by four evenly. So we're gonna be starting to talk about parts of a whole. We're not gonna have exactly whole numbers. All right, so let's get to how much you can get for $1. How many water bottles can I get for $1? So I'm gonna divide by four and divide by four. So we have 22 
divided by 4. 4 cannot divide 2. It can divide 22 by 5, or 5 times. 22 divided by 20 equals 2. Add a decimal point and a 0. Bring down the 0. 4 goes into 20 5 times, which is 20. So you can get five and a half bottles for one dollar. Now we want 33 bottles. So we want to know how do I get from 5.5 to 33? So we have to do 33 divided by 5.5. Remember, when you have a decimal in your divisor, you have to move it over as many times as needed to make a whole number. In this case, I just need to move it over one time. Sorry, one time. And now in my dividend, I need to move the decimal point over one time. And I'm gonna bring it straight up into the quotient. 55 cannot divide 3, it cannot divide 33, it can divide 330 6 times. 6 multiplied by 55 is 330. So our answer here is 6. So what that means is I had to multiply by 6, I had to multiply 6 by 5.5 to get 33. So that's what I had to do here. So now I have to do the same thing down here. $1 times six equals $6. So 33 bottles equals $6. So that's answer choice D. Which ordered pair names point B? So here we have point B, and remember we travel the x-axis first and then the y-axis. So we go over six, up four, and that is answer choice B. Which ordered pair names point K? We have to go over two and up. Now what number is halfway between four and six? It's five, so we have to go over two, up five. And that is answer choice C. Which is the graph of point R, one comma four? Well, A is four comma one, so this is four one. This is 4, 4. This one is 2, mm, like 7.9, something like that. 2, like 7.9, it's almost 8. And this one is 1, 4. 1, comma 4. So the answer is D. And to be honest with you, that looks just a little bit above four, but we'll give it to them. Which is the graph of point uh, five, seven? Okay, so here we go over five, up seven. So this is five, seven. So this is your answer right here. But let's go through all of them. Okay, this one is seven, five. Okay, C is five, five. D is two, four. Which is the graph of point Z, one comma a half? The answer is B, one and a half.
Chapter 1, Lesson 6. Number 1. Determine if the rates are equivalent. Explain your reasoning. Eight practices in two weeks compared to four practices in seven days. We're comparing practices and practices. And here we have weeks and here we have days. Now when you compare rates, they have to have the same unit. And weeks and days are different units, so I need to make them the same. The easiest way to do this in this particular problem is to change days to weeks because I know that seven days equals one week. So when I write the second ratio, I'm going to write four practices in one week. So I have eight practices. in two weeks compared to four practices in one week. So let's reduce this first ratio by dividing by two and I get four over one and four over one equals 4 over 1. Let's look at our answers. Since the rates have the same unit rate, same unit rate, they are not equivalent, they are equivalent. All right, we're going to go with answer choice B, they are equivalent. Chapter 1, Lesson 6. 2. Determine if the rates are equivalent. Explain your reasoning. 25 hours in 5 days compared to 8 hours in 2 days. So we have 25 hours in 5 days. We want to compare that to eight hours in two days. Now we can reduce this ratio by dividing by five, and we would get five hours in one day. And here we can divide by two, and we would get four hours in one day. Now these ratios are not equivalent. So when we look at our choices, since the rates do not have the same unit rate, they are not equivalent. So that would be answer choice B. Chapter one, lesson six. Determine if the rates are equivalent. Explain your reasoning. Five cans of soup for $3.75 compared to eight cans of soup for $6. So here we have, uh, for $3.75, you can get five cans of soup. And here, for $6, you can get eight cans. All right, so we're gonna have to figure out how much it would be for one can. So this requires us to divide by five, divide by five. So 375 divided by five. Five cannot divide three. 
It can divide 37 seven times, which is 35. I subtract, I get two. I bring down the five. Five is able to divide 25 five times, which is 25. And you have zero left over. So the cost would be 75 cents a can. Now, for the second ratio, we would have to divide by eight and divide by eight. So we have $6 divided by eight. Eight is not able to divide six. It can divide 67 times, which is 56. Have to borrow. Bring down the zero. Eight is able to divide 45 times, which is 40. And this unit rate is also 75 cents a can. So they both have the same unit rate. Okay, they both have the same unit rate and they are equivalent. So that is answer choice D. Chapter one, lesson six. Four, determine if each pair of ratios or rates is equivalent. Explain your reasoning. Four movie tickets for $32, eight movie tickets for $96. So we can, for uh, $32, you can get four tickets. This means that one ticket will cost you how much? Well, to figure this out, we have to divide by four, divide by four. 32 divided by four equals eight. So it'll cost you $8. Now over here, for $96, you can get eight movie tickets. And we wanna find out how much one ticket will be. So we have to divide by eight and divide by eight. 96 divided by eight. Nine is able to be divided by eight one time, which equals eight. It's one left over, bring down the six. Eight can go into 16 twice, which is 16. And you have zero left over. So that would cost $12 per ticket. These ratios are not equal, all right? So they do not have the same unit rate. They do not have the same unit rate, okay? So they are not equivalent. So this choice is that they are equivalent and this choice is that they're not equivalent. So it's answer choice B. Determine if the rates are equivalent, explain your reasoning. Four books for $32, five books for $40. So for $32, you can get four books. For $40, you can get five books. Okay. To complete this ratio, you would have to divide by four divide by four, 32 divided by four equals eight. So that would be $8. To complete this ratio, you would divide by five,
and you would also get $8. So these two ratios are equal. So they have the same unit rate, same unit rate, and they are equal. So that is answer choice D. Chapter one, lesson seven, cycling. In Mrs. Prosser's class, there are 32 students. If three students out of every eight prefer to ride their bicycles to school, how many students in the entire class like to ride their bicycles to school? So we have students who like to ride their bikes, and we're gonna compare that to the number of students in all. So the rate we're given is three students out of every eight students. So three students like to ride their bikes out of every eight in all. So that's our rate that we've been given. Now our problem is telling us that we have 32 students in all. So you have to ask yourself, am I gonna put that on the top or the bottom? Well, in all is on the bottom, so I'm gonna put 32 as my denominator. All right, let's complete this equivalent ratio. How do I get from eight to 32? I multiply times four. I do the same on the top. Three times four equals 12. So this means 12 students like to ride their bicycles to school. Question number two, exercise. The ratio of the number of miles walked by Fernando in a week to the number walked by Julia in a week is four to three. Julia walked 15 miles. How many miles did Fernando walk in a week? So we're comparing Fernando's distance of walking to Julia's. Now, it doesn't matter if you put Fernando on top or on the bottom and vice versa. It just matters that you're consistent. So, Fernanda, Fernando in a week to the number that Julia walks in a week is four to three. Now, because Fernando is first, that means the four represents Fernando and the three represents Julia. So we have four to three. That's our rate. Now we know that Julia walked 15 miles. So we're gonna put 15 on the bottom. And we wanna know how many Fernando walked. So we have to complete our equivalent ratio. To get from three to 15, we multiply by five. We multiply four by five and we get 20. So he walked 20 miles, which is answer choice C. Question three, marine life. The time that a dolphin can hold its breath underwater compared to the time a penguin can hold its breath underwater is represented by the ratio three to four. Now this three represents the time a dolphin can hold its breath because it comes first. And the four represents how far, how long a penguin can hold its breath because it comes second. So remember the order matters. If a penguin can hold its breath for 20 minutes, how long can a dolphin hold its breath? So we're comparing a dolphin to a penguin. So dolphin is three, penguin is four. That's our rate. And what we know is that a penguin can hold its breath for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna put a 20 on the bottom. And we wanna know how long a dolphin can hold its breath. To complete this ratio, we would multiply four times five, and we're gonna multiply three times five and that will give us 15. So that's answer choice B. Elephants. 
three African elephants can weigh a total of 13,500 pounds. At this rate, how many pounds do two African elephants weigh? Now, this is a little bit more challenging, but we can do it, all right? So we have pounds, and we have elephants. And we know that 13,500 pounds represents three elephants. Now my suggestion is we want to get to two elephants. The idea is that we want to know how much two elephants weigh. There's no easy way to get from three to two. That'd be wonderful if we could, but we can't. So what we really want to do then is get to one. So we want to go from three to one elephant, find out how much one elephant weighs, and then we can get to two elephants. So first we're going to have to divide 13,500 by three. Three cannot divide one. It can divide 13 by or four times, which is 12. And that leaves us with one left over. We bring down the five. Three is able to divide 15 five times, which is 15. Nothing left over, bring down the zero. Three goes into zero, zero times. Bring down the next zero. Three goes into zero, zero times. Okay. So one elephant weighs 4,500 pounds. Now we can figure out how many two elephants weigh by multiplying by two. So you have 4,500 times two. Two times zero is zero. Two times zero is zero. Two times five is 10, carry the one. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. So we have 9,000 pounds. So two elephants weigh 9,000 pounds, and that is answer choice C. In Crestview Middle School, 12 out of 16 students are right-handed. If there are 400 students in the school, how many are right-handed? So we're comparing right-handed students to students in all. Now we have a rate given to us of 12 out of 16. So that means we have 12 right-handed students out of 16 in all. <clears throat> and we know that there are 400 students in the school, so we're going to put 400 on the bottom. To complete this ratio, we need to figure out how do we get from 16 to 400. Now this isn't an easy math fact, so we actually have to do a little math, and we're going to do a little side work on the side here. So we have to figure out 400 divided by 16. 16 cannot divide 4, so I'm going to put a 0 there. 16 can divide 40 two times. 2 times 16, we can do this down here, 2 times 16. 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so we have 32. We can borrow. 10 take away 2 is 8 bring down the zero. Now, I know there's a zero here, and I know this is a rate, and so I first try to think, what math facts do I know when I multiply by six? Give me an answer with a zero. So I know that five times six is 30, so I start off by multiplying 16 times five. Five times six is 30, and five times one is five plus three is 80, so that works perfectly. All right, and I have zero. So I had to multiply 16 times 25 to get 400. Now I'm going to multiply 12 times 25. I'll do it up here, 12 times 25. 
5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. I'm done with the 5. Now I'm multiplying by 2, but 2 is actually a 20. So I'm going to add a 0 there. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Add 0 plus 0 is 0. 6 plus 4 is 10. Carry the 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. So that's 300. So out of 400 kids, 300 should be left, or sorry, out of 400 kids, 300 should be right-handed. Now you might ask yourself how many are left-handed. That would be 100.